The morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. After a stressful summer around here, it's been a, oh, a beautiful fall. Bright blue skies, brilliant colors on the landscape, cool but comfortable temperatures, and fairly light winds. And I've been lucky enough to be horseback working cattle about four days out of five in the last several weeks, and boy, it's been pretty much cowboy heaven. Calf and yearling prices were really good, and when we get to the rangeland news today, there might be more good news. There is some good news on the food price front. On the Irvin Saddles and Western Wear horse training file, a rider says her horse is a pretty good horse to ride except for one annoying habit. He is continually calling out every few minutes for her entire ride, and it's getting annoying. What can she do? And Yvonne Hollenbach has a great poem about a cowboy mail-order romance, and Melva McKinnon, my adopted sister, whose brother, Lewis McIver, donated one of his kidneys to me. We'll talk about her horses, her adventures, and her brother, Lewis, and his banjo lessons. And he said, you know what? I can't teach him anything. He is going all by ear. He has picked up so many things. I wouldn't be able to sit. I wouldn't be able to teach him. Yeah, that boy can pick. And a fitting song from Ian Munzik and Cody Johnson will set the mood for Melvina. She's a gooseneck on a dually, long neck at the bar. Loves old John Wayne movies Waltzing under them stars She's sun up in the saddle Cutting through the herd Loves branding her cattle Long live cowgirls Well she rode Well, Vaina McKinnon has started a lot of colts that have turned into great horses, and uh, she talks about the importance of having them ready for the farrier. Uh, 
you know, when you start these colts off and, and they get to know you, and I have some farriers that will come in and put shoes on when I'm heading for the mountains because I do the yaha and stuff. Mm. Um, once a year, sometimes twice a year, depends on you know, how it goes for that year. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've got some ones that, you know, put shoes on there pretty good, so they know me, and they know when they come they can handle the horses not not with a problem, and I always tell them, you know, like it's it's not their problem to to have to break the horses to put, do their feet, right? They should be able to walk in and... and uh, pick those animals' feet up, and uh, I even tell them, you know, just tell them, pick it, you know, give me your feet, and then, boom, the horse is already lifting in their feet and not even touching them, yeah. and look at me and go, oh, that's pretty cool. No fighting, no fighting with these guys, I'll tell you. Got some old dandies here, eh? and uh, the Peppy San was my kind of favorite, and, and the Coyote horse was my was my, my favorite cutting horse, and I got a lot of that lines here, so I'm, like I said, I'm did you ever watch uh, either Dave Batty or Chunky Woodward on Peppy San? You know what? I actually have a gentleman that uh, was a shoer here for me years ago. Um, he actually broke Peppy San. Really? And um, he was telling me all about him. And I have one mare here. He has tried to buy off, off of me for the last probably... 12 years, <laughs> that I am not giving that mare up, and every year she throws me a real dandy colt that you believe, and I am so proud of her. Uh, she stands out from the rest of them. You can really um, see her from the, like mine run the roadside here. We, we Our land runs along the roadside, and everybody that comes by here, that's the first thing they come into the yard wanting to know about that black. Well, she looks black, but she's a dark bay, mm. and she's a beautiful animal, and that's a peppy sand horse. So right. I'm quite proud of that one. I really am. Do you have uh, your own stud, or do you breed to? My old stud, I finally had to put him down. Uh, that would be a year and a half ago. He came out of Dayton, Texas. Um, he went to one gentleman. And uh, I kind of talked him out of him, and I got him, and I was really proud of him. He was one heck of a horse, I'll tell you. When you came into the arena to do a cattle penning, he would drop those front shoulders so fast, his ears would just pin right back, and the cows were still at the other end of the arena. They hadn't even brought them up yet. And people would go, I can't believe what that animal just did. And I said, yeah. well, I'm ready for it, and so is he. And a little stud horse, he was such a gentleman. Melvina talks about some of the great Quarter Horse Foundation bloodlines and how they fit into her breeding program when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Malvina McKinnon has owned a lot of special horses, and a lot of them were stallions, and she talked about one in particular. Um, the gentleman that had him before me said he had a little bit of a problem with him because he said he was a stud horse, and I said, well, you know, with stud horses, you got to get on top of them all the time, right? You can't take your mind off of them. No, you got to no. keep your eyes on them at all times. And uh, he said, wow, I can't believe what you've done with him. And I said, well, you know, it's been a little bit of a challenge, but we've got to that point. And, uh, you know, I in the early springtime when the mares are starting to come into heat, then I, you know, I hold him back for a little while. And uh, as soon as it's starting to get a decent deal where I can get him out there, then I started taking him out. But, yeah, I, I had to put him down... Oh, that was probably, yeah, at least two years ago. Um, but I was still penning off of him until he was 28 years old. Wow. And he, his last baby was at 28. Hmm. And I have her, I've, I've, ke I've kept her, actually, uh, a nice little Palomino horse. And, man, does she, she's shaped just like him. And anything that she sees run by her, her head's down and she's chasing already. And it doesn't matter uh -huh. if it's a blanket that just came off a horse and they're uh -huh. dragging a blanket, she's after it. A cat, <laughs> you uh -huh. name it, her ears are just pinned. Actually, I had her at the vet the other day and we were getting her teeth done and his cat walked by. 
he goes, grab her. And this little mare just dropped her head and her ears pinned back. And he said, oh, my God, I've never seen anything like it. It's off my old guy. Eh? Oh, wow. The thing. But, you know, it's hard these days because those type of horses were made that way. They were, it was bred like a working cow dog. You know what I mean? They were bred for it. Yeah. Where now you don't see too much of that, you know, like, like, he didn't have a lot of training on the cutting. He, it was just in him. And mm. when you started to work him and put that rest to him, he, he just he just took over. And it was just amazing. And another story about another great horse <laughs> after a young ranch-raised kid from Alberta that you may have heard of. Well, that young fella, Brett Kessel, has done pretty well. I guess he's not that young anymore, but boy, how many Juno Awards has he won? And how many number one top ten hits has he had? Boy, doing pretty well. Young fella from Flat Lake, Alberta. And now it's back to Malvina McKinnon. Actually, the guy that I got him off of, believe it or not, he told me a story. And anybody that has seen this stallion told me. They've never seen anything like it. I guess he went to make a corner at, when they were bringing the cows in, when they were doing the cattle penning. And he, they were had all three cows, and they were coming down that stretch, and that one cow decided to flip back. And that little stud horse dropped his front shoulders and made a turn up against the railing. And when he made a turn up against that railing, that gentleman that was on him went over the railing and sat there and watched that horse by himself, because the other two guys were just puzzled, watched him put those cows back in the pen. <laughs> <laughs> himself, without anybody with them. It 
was just amazing, he said. And I got to actually sit and watch it. So I said, yeah, he was quite a horse, man. You really had to sit and ride him. Definitely would lose you if, if you weren't knowing what you were doing, that's for sure. Yeah, he was quite a little horse. Yeah, and just sure just whereabouts is, is your place exactly now? We are, um, if you know where Fort Saskatchewan is, just past um, Edmonton. It's sure do, yeah. Side. We're probably another probably about 45 minutes maybe a well it may be a little less depends i guess how fast you drive (laughs) but um yeah and we're east of that yet Uh, we're east actually we're east of lamont okay yeah and then there's uh lamont we're east of that eh? probably about 15 minutes east of lamont yeah our land runs right along the highway so which is really nice like you can see our arena and we have a log house you can see on the hillside um where we sit and uh we have a nice little spot here so we have a quite a bit of room to you know yeah it, it's uh, a really nice spot Coming right up is another real good song and then the Rangeland News when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. The Rangeland News looks at a lot of interesting developing stories including possibly some good news about food price inflation. And I found another song I think you'll like coming right up but oh right now you've got to hear this. The 2024 Spirit of the West cruise to South America is nearly sold out. There still are a few spots left for this once in a lifetime experience. Our group, hosted by Kathy and Mark McMillan, will take you along to South America from one side to the other. And you'll get to sail right around Cape Horn and visit the Falkland Islands, a 19 day holiday with a 15 day cruise on the Sapphire Princess. And all shore excursions are private and included, and there's a special group farm tour in Argentina. Check out the cruise page at u-mcclennan.com to see some of these incredible shore excursions. It'll take you right into the lifestyle of the gauchos and the South American cattle industry and much more. Great chance to visit with your fellow Spirit of the West cruisers, and we all have so much in common. And booking on this great cruise will help us keep the Spirit of the West on the air. For all the details, just call 1-800-530-0131 and see our cruise page at hugh-mcclennan.com. I had to hire a a South American accordion player for that. (laughs) Anyway, uh, Jill Jones. He's a great hand with horses and a fine singer and guitar player from Texas. And the late Nancy Thorwardson wrote this Western Swing Swing flavored song done here by Jill Jones and the Lone Star Corral. Singing, my lariat swinging, the stars are all aglow. I hear the cattle low. My trail boss is calling to me by and by. The full moon's lighting up the prairie sky. The world is ours as we're climbing the stars up to heaven. My pony's hoping, hoping. we'll soon be loping, loping. riding the western lands with all the Calling to me by and by 
radiator cap to an engine block. BCTractorParts.com is your source for whatever you need to keep that essential implement in top shape. Specializing in quality new replacement parts for agricultural tractors, Massey Ferguson, Ford, John Deere, David Brown, Case International Harvester, Universal Deutsch Leyland, Landini, Oliver Fiat, Alice, Zetor, White, and a lot more. If you don't have internet, just call Mark at 250-395-0960. One click or one call and the parts will be on their way. BCTractorParts.com The Rangeland News from the Spirit of the West. A roundup of issues and events from the world of agriculture. At the top of page one, it says, After another trip to the city to buy groceries and supplies, we entered up all of our receipts, and as you're aware, prices for just about everything are still going up, and it looks like we may never return to the prices of 2019, but apparently the rate of inflation seems to be slowing down a bit, uh, and as always, Gary Crawford has the story. If you do the grocery shopping at your house, you know firsthand that food prices have gone up a lot in the last three years, especially in 2022. But there is some good news on the food price front. The latest forecast for food price inflation at the grocery store this year is for prices to end up 5% higher this year than last. And that is well below the 11.4% increase we saw in 2022. USDA economist Matt McLaughlin told us, no, we have not seen overall grocery prices inflation disappear this year but what we have seen this whole year is very gradual disinflation or not price decreases but a slowing of price increases and we expect them also to continue into the future as well Yes, in fact, Matt's early forecast for 2024 is for grocery store food prices to rise, but only by 1.6 percent. The average yearly food inflation rate over the last 20 years has just been 2 percent. So we may finally see prices returning to normalcy. Gary Crawford reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Sylvain Charlebaugh, the head of Agri-Food and Alex Analytics Lab at Dalhousie University, says consumers trust farmers but have the opposite opinion of grocers. 82% of Canadians, they found in a recent survey, believe that greed is behind the food inflation because of the grocer's greed, he said. And when grocers speak in the media, most people don't believe them. And that's a big issue, even though many assessments have found that they aren't to blame for food inflation. Canada's food inflation rate is second lowest in the world behind the United States, and Canadians spend 9.1% of their budget on food, which is sixth lowest in the world. And farmers should pay attention to the conversation around food because it centers on how consumers value and perceive it, Charlebois said. And the other disturbing thing, he said, was that we noticed that in our surveys, 17% of Canadians actually believe food should be free. And that's troubling. A lot of people out there see no value in what farmers are doing, what processor do, uh, processors are doing, and what retailers are doing, and what the food industry is doing. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it's amazingly strange, he said. A recent Iowa State University study was designed to evaluate whether the effects of winter grazing or confinement for winter care of beef cows in Iowa would have any impact on the physical condition of the cow or the calf born to the cow in the spring. And the study looked at two types of winter feeding and care and compared three management groups of cows at two ISU farm locations from December to March. Project leader Garland Delkey, associate scientist with the Iowa Beef Center, said the cows were at least second parity in either Black Angus or a percentage of Black Angus and Semitol breeding, and all were due to calve in mid-March through April. Half the cows in all the groups were placed in a feed yard with some degree of shelter, and the other half was assigned to a winter swath grazing protocol. And he said all were supplemented with better quality feed about three weeks prior to calving to ensure adequate forage quality for cows and their developing calves. Measurements throughout the final trial included forage quality, weather data, water intake, cow weight, visual body condition scoring, mud scoring, and ultrasound of the 12th rib fat cover and ribeye area and calving data. And although there were slight measurement differences between and among the groups by location, it appears that where the feedstuff quality is similar between the scenarios, there was no difference. 
Currently, more than 1,400 feral horses are located across six equine management zones in Alberta. Some equine management zones are facing significant challenges to the long-term sustainability of the ecosystem because of the number of horses on the landscape. Alberta's public rangelands are productive ecosystems that support a lot of land uses including recreation, forestry and resource extraction, wildlife, livestock and feral horses, and all these uses need to be managed and balanced to ensure rangelands don't become degraded, they say. And as the feral horse population grows, horses move from areas with good foraging opportunities into areas that are less able to support them, and that puts pressure on other wildlife and livestock and creates challenges for ecological stability, they say. And by establishing and implementing a science-based management framework for feral horses, Alberta's government can better support the species while continuing to protect rangelands and other animals that live on the uh, landscape. And the framework includes a pilot project with the Wild Horses of Alberta Society where capture permits are issued to place distressed or nuisance feral horses into adoption programs. There's a calf and regular cattle sale at the Kamloops Yards of the BC Livestock Co-op on November 7th. And there's a bred cow and heifer sale in Williams Lake on November the 8th and the regular sale on the 9th. Regular sale in Vanderhoof on the 10th. And you can get all the information and see the sale streaming live at bclivestock.bc.ca. I still just love listening to Wayne and Larry selling cattle at the co-op. Boy, something about their voices their cadence it's just uh, a kind of soothing really to listen to and the prices aren't bad to hear either meanwhile at the innisfail auction market innisfail alberta pre-sort calf sales on mondays calves delivered on sunday and of course regular cattle sales every wednesday and a bread cow and heifer sale on friday november 24th see innisfailauctionmarket.com or give danny Dwayne, or mark a call 1-800-710-3166 and that brings us down to the final item, and the story as I heard it said that an old cowboy who was pretty savvy, and they said just as tough as rawhide, finally died and he went to heaven, and at the pearly gates, St. Peter said, gee, we've looked over your records, and we can't really find anything good or bad, and I'm not sure if we can let you in. I'll tell you what, can you tell us anything you did in your life that might help us decide? And the old cowboy thought for a minute and he said, sure. I was riding my horse down this country road when I saw a group of real nasty looking biker types with big tattoos and leather jackets and chains. And they pulled over this lady in her car and they really had her scared. So I got off my horse and I grabbed my rope and I went right up to the leader of that gang and I yanked that ring right out of his upper lip. And I said that if him and his gang didn't leave that lady alone, they'd have to deal with me. Wow, St. Peter said, that's impressive. When did this happen? The cowboy said, about three minutes ago. And that's the Rangeland News. Coming up on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, a rider is really getting tired of hearing her horse calling out constantly when she's riding them. And uh, there's more from Melvina McKinnon, too, when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Malvina McKinnon has more to say about horses and her brothers in a few minutes. And there's a song coming up from a genuine cowgirl, and uh, she's a great hand with a horse, a rope, and a guitar. But right now, a word from my horse. Now it's time for the Horse Training File, brought to you by Irvine Tack and Western Wear, Canada's largest Western store. Whether you're in the pasture or the oil patch, you work hard and you need quality workwear that's up to the challenge. Look no further than Irvin Tack and Western Wear. They've got it all to keep you warm and safe, including fire resistant and high visibility clothing featuring the biggest names in workwear from Ariat, Burn, Wrangler and Snickers. Stop in or shop online at Irvin's.ca, exit 305 off Highway 2 by Crossfield. Canada's largest Western store. My horse never bucks. He's pretty good to ride, but most of the time he drives me nuts by his non-stop whinnying. It's loud, and the only time he stops is when his pasture buddy is being ridden close by. What can I do to make him quit? 
Well, making a horse quit something is pretty tough unless you can take away the reason for the behavior. In this case, it means the horse is desperately missing his herd, his companions, and he's doing what he would do if he was running loose and got separated from his herd. He's asking for company and security, and he's not really getting it from the rider. Now, I've seen a lot of riders punish a horse when he does this by spanking or spurring or yanking on him, but I don't think that's the best thing to do. In my experience, it works way better to put him to work as soon as he starts to call. Do whatever you can to take his mind off his insecurity and get it on the job. Trot him in a circle, ask for a leg yield, a side pass, a transition from a walk to a trot to a lope and back. Ride with confidence, but be soft in your cues. And once you feel his mind coming back to you, let him rest if he will. And if he starts calling again, just put him back to work. Believe it or not, if you can ride him often enough and repeat these exercises frequently, he will eventually get his security and his comfort from you and your leadership. And he won't feel the need to call for a herd mate because you will have filled that need for him. For Irvin Saddles and Western Wear, that is the horse training file. Something we've done with our horses, or I should say maybe for our horses for a long time, is give them a daily feeding of Hoffman's Horse Ration. Has all they need to keep them sound and healthy, their digestive system working right. And you can find out all about it at hoffmanshorseproducts.com. If you're buying or selling farm machinery, heavy equipment, or trucks, let Progressive Auctions take the hassle out of your sale or your search. There's an online auction every Wednesday at progressiveauctions.ca. Doesn't matter where you live, Progressive Auctions can find the machinery or equipment you need or the buyers who are looking for what you're selling. Progressiveauctions.ca. For more information, call 844-309-9424. Trinity Seely was ranch-raised in British Columbia's Chilcotin country, and since uh, then, along with her husband, she's ridden and worked cattle on ranches from, oh, Wyoming, Washington, Oregon, and Nebraska, all over the West. And now she heads up the horse program at the Thatcher School in Ojai, California, working with young people. And through all their life, they've raised four kids, and Trinity is still doing appearances and writing great songs, like this one called Little Thing. One, two, three, four, five Keep her in the way, let her by I didn't say bye, I said she's a dry Wait here, darling, and I'll be right back Three hours later when I'm fighting mad Cause he forgot about me But he's so dang sorry we'll Keep on riding towards that patch of sage Don't you think that's a little vague Considering that we live in sagebrush sea All the little things that keep you loving me Of snow can't get my buckles and clipped. It's too dang cold. You're just sitting there starting to laugh when you see how many layers of clothing I have. Sometimes it's hard to be the only girl. Yes, I washed your red book in the washing machine. I was trying to get your wranglers clean. How hard can it be? To take off of your boots All the little things That keep me loving you I let go to low You say, darling Let's go take a ride It'll be real romantic here right by my side And I'm sure you wouldn't mind Opening the gates If you head this one I'll catch your two back feet And together we can lay her down Real nice and sweet And I think we make A heck of a team 
said we're holding hands at the end of the day Cause we're too tired for fighting now anyway I can tell by the look in your eyes You love me too There's a thousand of them out there anyhow I guess I should know which one you're referring to All the little things that keep me loving you So if you want to know if you love your man Try working cattle hand in hand And if you're both still alive at the end of the day Listening to those great words, it just can't help but make you smile. Trinity Seely, and now here's more of the conversation with Malvina McKinnon. Now, when you and uh, your brothers were growing up, uh, were you the only one that really kind of inherited that horse gene, or did did well, you, you know, your other family members have some of it you too? Know what, you, uh, uh, my brothers all rode. Um, I think sometimes. They did it because I did it. But I think most of the time is they wanted to prove they could do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they couldn't let their sister do something that they couldn't. But yeah. I'll tell you what, they are they are the country music singers, and I am the writer. And that's the way we always put it after. Um, I know my oldest brother there, Don. Um, actually, I can't say I'm older, but he's younger than me, but older than the other yeah. two. I gotta make him feel good, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he has really started to get back into the horses. He kind of really liked the cutting. Years ago, um, in uh, Winnipeg there, uh, they have a, a, an old steam engine uh, in a train there, and it hauled the queen, and I had a paint stallion again again <laughs> i'm always into the stallion horses but anyway i had a paint stallion that i rode and what we did was we robbed the train we did a, a scene where we you know rode our horses and galloped beside the train my brothers would jump off jump onto the train and they would pretend they were robbers yeah no my brothers they were they, they were horsemen, too, but not quite as much as what I was in. Yeah. Hmm. So, but they're sure talented pickers and singers, that's for oh, sure. Man. Oh, you couldn't beat them. I still yeah. remember my brother, Lou. He was probably hmm, maybe 10, 11, and he had, my dad had brought home a banjo for him. And then they decided to get him a uh, uh, a guy to teach him a little bit more. And this gentleman that was teaching him had worked with him probably for not even quite a week. And he said, you know what? I can't teach him anything. He is going all by ear. Yeah. And he said, he has picked up so many things, I wouldn't be able to, stay, I wouldn't be able to teach him. He said, he's <laughs> way ahead of me. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. dad, it's priceless. You know, I have um, a paint stallion and he's beautiful. Um, I don't know if you've seen pictures of him, but he's something else. And um, I've been using him mostly in, in the mountains. Um, I would love to start cutting on him because he does have all the breeding for uh, cutting horses. He's out at Dry Dock and, and the Dock Bar and Pepe Fan. He's out at Cutter Bill, mm. uh, Pocahontas, wow. you name it. It's all in his lines. And he is beautiful. And I know you got a paint horse now. <laughs> yeah, uh, you knew that, yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet they'd look nice together. Oh, I bet you they would. Yeah. They could be twins and, and bro and sister. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, well, I'm just so lucky that at this age I can still, you know, climb on my horse without a mounting block and ride five or six hours and do it just about every day. So, yeah. 
At this age, that uh, that's pretty good. And if it wasn't for one of your brothers, uh, I wouldn't be able to do any of this at all. So, well, I'm sure glad they did help you out. Oh my gosh, it's just incredible, you know. Yeah, very special. Yeah. And you know, that's the way I look at it. You, we got some time. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Mel. And like I say, I hope sometime we will be face to face. Well, what? I'll put that on my bucket list, you. And still to come, a classic song of the West written by the lady who created so many Western and country hits over the years, Cindy Walker, and Yvonne Hollenbeck in the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight when the spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the spirit of the West. Cindy Walker, the prolific Texas songwriter who... Uh, in every decade from about the 1940s, uh, right up to the 80s, turned out country and pop hits, including songs like You Don't Know Me, and remember In the Misty Moonlight, and uh, Cherokee Maiden, great big hit from Earl Haggard, and most of her songs were romantic country flavored, but she wrote a lot of western classics as well. Inspired by newspaper accounts of the Dust Bowl, Cindy wrote her first song, Dusty Skies, when she was 12 years old. Now this is Cindy Walker with her old composition, Cowboy Serenade. When the day is done And the western sun Slides behind the hills And the campfires lay Smoky glow Singing soft and low Comes the cowboy serenade Doggies lift their hands From their prairie bed the cowboy serenade Nobody knows the song he's singing There's no certain words to his refrain He said what his heart is saying to a tune by the wind and the rain and he sings of love neath the stars above of a gal who the cowboy serenade. Well, this is called uh, <laughs> Truth and Advertising. Here's a uh, ranch wife from North Dakota, Yvonne Hollenbeck. She was lonely in a city in a life she'd learned to hate. And she thought that it would help if she could find herself a mate. For weeks, she checked the classifieds, the lonely people kind, looking for the type of man that she would like to find. Alas, she happened on one that really caught her eye and she knew at once that this would be the perfect kind of guy. The ad read he was lonely and looking for a wife, one who liked to cook and would enjoy his country life. It said he lived alone on a large Wyoming spread and her heart began to flutter from this ad that she just read. Romance began to blossom as they courted through the mail, and both began to thinking that this match could never fail. 
She caught a train to Casper. It's a good thing it was night, because vision isn't good in a railway station light. And you know how you can visualize a body and a face, and when you finally meet them, you were really way off base? Well, she'd seen them in the movies and all those Western scenes, and the image of a cowboy had for years been in her dreams. Why, even cowboy poets like Baxter, Jess, and Pat are tall and dark and handsome. But this dude was short and fat. He had a big potato nose, a red and runny eye, and the cowboy she had dreamed of was a far cry from this guy. But there's a lid for every kettle and there's soup for every pot cause a fancy classy city gal was something she was not. She weighed at least 400 pounds. Most her teeth were gone. As he looked her up and down, he got to thinking something's wrong. But she'd come this far to meet him, so he best give her the test to see how well she'd like it on his ranch out in the west. The station agent told me that it was really quite a sight with him wedged into his pickup headed out into the night. And as you might imagine, it must have been a thrill when he told her that his home was waiting round that distant hill. But she must have been surprised when he finally came to stop before a wooden wagon with a rounded canvas top. She asked him where his house was and he answered, this is it, although he was concerned as to whether she would fit. Now many days have come and gone and they make a happy pair, although they both were fooled, but neither seems to care. But they learned a real good lesson and I hope you have learned one too about the ads you happen on to check them through and through. Just because a man's a rancher does not mean he punches cows. He might live on a hog ranch picking out some sows. And every city gal don't always come with savoir faire. She might just be a country hick that's stuck a living there. So be careful of the classifieds. You better look before you leap or you could end up in Wyoming in some wagon, herding sheep. Well, I should mention that uh, the background guitar there was played by a dear friend of ours and one of the most wonderful guitar players in Western music, Rich O'Brien, and uh, from the time this show was written until we got around to recording it, Rich had ridden across the Great Divide, and he will certainly be missed. Thanks so much for riding along, and I sure hope you can join us right here next week at the same time. And as always, thanks to Mark and Kathy. That's Mark and Kathy McMillan, our uh, great Spirit of the West support crew. And uh, be sure and check the latest issue of Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine. Find it on our newsstand or find the link at our website, u mclennancom And that's where you can find the links to our YouTube and our, uh, our podcast version. And uh, if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, that would sure help us. Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon.